I, I have a, an answer and I'm hoping, I feel like there's more and I'm hoping you can maybe help me articulate the more. You're going to give us the answer and you want us to give you the question? Maybe. That's jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter has profound special needs. And we heard this earlier yesterday, another child, um, quadriplegic seizure disorder, um, nonverbal, my, my daughter. And nonverbal, but not non-communicative. Not at all. Not non-receptive. Absolutely. And I feel like with her, like the doctors and all will say, Lauren is cognitively and emotionally a toddler, which I see, and it feels like spiritually she is a master. I mean, she well, we had that discussion already today, didn't we? You are born masters because you are born knowing everything that we're now trying to call you back to. And the details are really about your personal preferences. And so when someone's born as you are describing those preferences are different than the preferences that others would have it's the hardest thing for counselors and therapists who are working with people with special needs it's the hardest thing for them to understand it comes up a lot with autism and all kinds of situations with different labels most humans are wanting very much to bring everyone to some greater level of normalcy and we say you don't understand this person went to a great degree of intentionality not to be born moldable like most of the planet and that's why i say i don't know what my question is or i feel like maybe i have the answer or maybe there's like this watershed moment because recently in a meditation I could see Lauren just like I was in the sun and just feel her as the sun. Like you talk about a river of energy. She's like the sun putting out energy. You heard the conversation earlier about the younger they are. Yeah. Well, in this case, it's not the age. It's the intention. Easier to be more in alignment when you are cognitively considering less. So she's having fewer, would you say, knee-jerk reactions to things. Are there things that yank her chain? She's just, there were, like with major medical issues that now haven't happened in a while. And like if we turn Barney off and she doesn't want us to. Because she knows what she wants. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And now, like recently, a friend suggested this. And when I see Lauren, I say, you know, you're an angel. And she just like squeals with delight and kicks her legs. And like, she knows it's true. It isn't because she understands the word angel. It's because you know what angel means to you. And you're radiating a vibrational conversation to her that she understands because she reads your vibration. The words are irrelevant to her. And, and maybe my question, maybe my question is this. And you've well, the answer is this. Okay. And then we'll see if your question matches. The answer is this. In your interaction, the dominant thing that you want to be aware of and do your best to accomplish is to be tuned in, tapped in, turned on whenever you approach her because that's the wavelength on which she will meet you that's where she always is she gives you the advantage she's like a satellite dish that's beaming in what it's like to be an inner being she's more like an inner being than any physical relationship that anybody has that could work to your disadvantage because you could tune to that and it's why people appreciate some of their dear pets so much because the pets are tuned in and they're not judging and finding fault and that sort of thing. So our encouragement to you is to still differentiate between her, this angel that's beaming a signal right down real close to you and your own inner being.
know that you're calibrating to your inner being and then engaging with her not taking your lead from her alignment can you say that again this is the subject of conditional love and unconditional love when you have someone like this in your life who you spend a lot of time with and give a lot of thought to you could without meaning to let that be the meter by which you set your gauge and that's still as easy as that is to do that's like Esther being married to Jerry and all she had to do was notice the bliss of her life with him and she was tuned in tapped in turned on it was great until he croaked and then of course he was not her only means of connection she'd heard enough from us but it took a while because it was really easy to feel good living that life with him and so that's what we're getting at you want to know what it feels like to really calibrate to who you are and enjoy that as well all right thank you did that match your question i think so speak it if you want speak what was on your mind you've talked a lot about the um lower and upper emotional scale and i guess i am confused about this ultimately it feels really healthy but in the meditation i did recently where i could just really see lauren as the sun then i would literally like like fall over and just be sobbing of with sadness which i don't feel at all right now but i know i did about like the losses and never be able to ride a bike and won't be able to talk or go to prom you know there's real like grief there and then i'd stand up again and just see her in the sun and it was just like <laughs> well when you remember we didn't know of anybody that holds any desire no matter what it is that is for any other reason than they believe they will feel better or good in the having of it and so someone like lauren is already feeling good so she doesn't need the conditional things see here's what we're getting at getting to ride a bicycle is joyful but we want you to be joyful and then ride a bicycle we don't want you to need to ride the bicycle in order to be joyful and there are a lot of people like that that need something all the time if they don't have something presenting itself to them then they're in a funk and that's a hard way to live that's a rough ride because there's a lot of different chain yankable moments that are possible that's why people like lauren spirits make the decision they deliberately make the decision i'm going to be a teacher of unconditional love i'm going to be in a position where even though I'm tempted like most of the world is to jump through hoops to please people I'm not going to be one of those people I'm not going to be one of those people I'm just going to be tuned in tapped in turned on it's a lovely thing and often when we have conversations like this most people would say I would not choose that I would not choose that to be my experience and yet when it is your experience there are so many gifts in it Esther would say I would not choose that my darling would take off so much earlier than I was ready for it and yet there's so much benefit from that so now she says not only was that not so bad but that was a pretty good idea and I can feel that we had some intentionality around that that's why you got here before I did he told her I might cut out before you and she said I don't care I don't care I don't care because she didn't want to miss what was going to happen in between and then when he croaked she said wait I care I care but she got over that only took a decade no, 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 no. No. good good thank you yeah yeah